welcome back to another video. Yeah, it's been a while, so I wanted to talk about that. I have been gone a while. I haven't posted a video, I don't know how long, like maybe a few months now. Uh, nothing's happened, really. Honestly, it's kind of a good thing. I have been experiencing less uh, migraines and less headaches. So most days I didn't have a headache at all, which was great. And when I did, they weren't as bad as they used to be, and I've just had less migraine attacks, which has been really good. And you would think I have more time to do things. I also have been decreasing some of my medication, and so that's been a thing that has taken a couple of weeks for my body to get used to, which was like a couple of weeks that were a bit confusing and a bit like um, weird. I'm less tired because I'm in less pain, so I've been experiencing better days and more good days and more good hours in a day, uh, which has been really good, but also has taken some getting used to because at the end of the day, I am still chronically ill. I still have other conditions that give me chronic fatigue and I have to be careful how I do things and how I manage those. So the fact that my chronic migraine has been more manageable recently because that's not like screaming at me all the time, I have been infuriating my other conditions. Uh, that's a joke. No, I haven't. I just, um, yeah, I've taken the time to like deep clean the closets and deep clean the kitchen and deep clean the office and you know, I'm looking into other opportunities of things that I want to do with my time and like creatively and stuff. One of those things is I'm going to be writing for this Boonie Village um, blog. I'm going to be writing about books and all that good stuff, which is something I really enjoy, but I found that about that on this channel has been not very popular. Most people don't really care what I have to say about books. I just have had to take time to kind of get used to this whole like less headache thing and less my medication thing and just like it's just been an adjustment also obviously christmas was really stressful and we've been in a lockdown now for a couple of months and it's just been like life was just really overwhelming at the time and on top of that like figuring out how to navigate this uh less symptomatic situation has been um, interesting and really good and I'm really thankful and I'm really really happy about that but also I'm sure you all understand that even when your symptoms decrease you still have to you're like okay so now my limitations are different now so now I have to test those limits and like figure out where I'm at like I need to know how many hours of the day I can use and how many things I can do before I get into a flare which I'm not really good at learning that because I've gotten into myself into a lot of flares because of that. Because I'm like, I feel so good that I forget that I shouldn't just, you know, keep going until I'm exhausted. So that's been what's been going on, honestly. It's not a bad thing at all. It's, I found that when I have the energy to film, I don't feel like it because I want to do all the things. And then when I'm sitting down and I'm too tired to do anything, I'm like, oh, I wish I'd filmed my video because now I could edit it. Other things that have happened in the meantime, which are really exciting, is we hit 1,500 followers or subscribers on YouTube, which is really, really cool. So thank you for doing that. Um, thanks for like watching me and following along with my journey and watching my old videos where I look really different from now. <laughs> um, and yeah, just thanks for being here. And on that note, I also have revamped a lot of my tiers and things on Patreon. So if you want to join and support me, that would be a really good way to make sure that I make more videos. Okay, that's, I think that's everything that I have to say before we get into the video. So that's my little update. There you go. Okay, cool. So today I'm going to be talking about poop. So if you are uncomfortable with talking about poop, this is your cue to leave. If you don't have IBS and you don't want to know, this is your cue to leave. You've heard about my update. Like, it's fine. I will not be mad at you. If you leave now, that's fine. We can catch up another time when you, I want to talk about something that is less poop. However, if you like me, you have IBS and you sometimes just don't know what the hell your gut is doing and you just need, you just need a little help. Um, this video is for you. Little disclaimer before we get started, all of the things that I will recommend have been recommended to me, or most of them, 
uh, have been recommended to me by my gastroenterologist. So if you are ever unsure about something, make sure you talk to a gastroenterologist or your GP, whatever, whoever follows you. I find that the best person to talk to is a gastroenterologist because they know the gut. So most of these things that I will suggest and that I will talk about are over the counter. You can even buy them online. You can buy them in most supermarkets. Like they are easy to find. Obviously, if you take anything in excess, it will be harmful for you. So make sure you read about the these things and like experiment carefully and be very careful about these things. Um, these are just things that have at times work for me, I will explain more on that later, are things that I find helpful. I wouldn't normally make a video about this because I don't think it's wise to recommend like medication um, or like supplements and stuff, but because a lot of us, me included, have not been going to our gastroenterologists because we can't, because it's a freaking pandemic and it's hard to justify going to the doctor for, hey, I don't think I'm pooping right like less right than I usually poop, you know, because it's never really right. That's it. So first things first, where did I put that? Can you believe I went around and collected everything and I forgot. Classic me. The first thing on my list is wet wipes. Now, listen, I have IBS. -C. Um, there's three types of IBS. If you don't know, I have a video all about this, which I will link below. So you can go ahead and watch that if you want to know more like about IBS and like what it is and the types and all that. So IBS-C basically means that uh, I have the constipation type, which means that I don't go to the toilet very often. When I do manage to go and use the toilet, a lot of times it's um, very difficult to pass or uh, because your stool stays in your gut for a very long time, it gets really dry and it can be really painful. So a lot of times uh, people with IBS-C will get like little hemorrhoids, which are like there's different, it can be different types of reasons why you get hemorrhoids, but basically it's like a little wound, like a little cut in your anal area, I guess, like not <laughs> in, I guess somewhere in your gut. When you go to the toilet, when you do manage to get a bowel movement, you might get blood and it might be really, really painful. Most of the time when I go to the toilet, it's not like enjoyable. And I'm not saying that other people enjoy going to the bathroom, but it can be like a relief, you know? Uh, not for me. Most of the times it's painful. It's yeah, it's just like uncomfortable and because of that oftentimes I feel like my bum is hurting afterwards and like I need to like take 10 minutes to catch my breath. So it has happened to me before where I have tried so hard to go to the bathroom that I have almost fainted from the effort. So don't do that. Wet wipes because when after I have a bowel movement a lot of times it just feels more comfortable to to wipe with wet wipes, something that's like soft and not scratchy and that cleans easily and fast, basically. I like to use the biodegradable ones, very important. Um, and also if like me you have IBS-C, uh, get the ones with the plastic lid that closes because sometimes you get ones without this like closure and there is just like a little plastic thing and those can are harder to close which means that your wet wipes will dry out with time now if you are a person who regularly goes to the bathroom like every day then you you'll go through wet wipes really quickly if you don't i maybe i think i have like a bowel movement every two to three days when i'm doing well it will be a while before i run out of wet wipes and i just find that the little lid thing is really important keeps them fresh and means that you waste less of them because if they go dry then they're not doing their job and you throw them away and it just seems like wasteful to me. You can also get containers that have this lid like you get for baby wipes and then you can just replace them with wipes from other packages that aren't, that don't have this lid. You can also do that. These are like the brand of the supermarket that I go to but you will probably have to try a few things, a few brands before you find the ones that you like. Next on the list is a probiotic. I don't actually have any on me today. I take a probiotic. Basically it is a little pill that's like a chewable one and it creates like good gut bacteria. But the thing is like obviously it creates a lot more good gut bacteria than like taking probiotic yogurt for example or like eating probiotic foods. Just really? People are recommended to do it for a month and then they'll 
be off of it for two or three months and then do it again for a month and keep going like that because my gut is just we tend to do it every other month instead. Basically, Nex is all like laxatives, I guess, or some sort of laxatives. It's called uh, Movicol, this Portuguese brand, I don't know. A bunch of these little sachets. You just drink this straight from here. You don't have to, you can mix it with stuff if you want, but you don't have to. Uh, it tastes like a salty banana. It's a very weird thing. It's supposed to taste like bananas and strawberries, I think. Thing. Yeah, it works relatively well. Like sometimes if I took one and it worked, sometimes I had to take three before anything happened or like I have to take it for a few days. My gut normally kind of waxes and wanes like the moon. Like sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And sometimes I take that thing uh, in the exact same way as I take as I've taken it in the past and it doesn't work and it's just weird. The other thing that happens to me a lot is I will go off of things. So um, it'll stop working or it'll start making me really sick and really nauseous and I have to switch, um, which apparently is not very common and my gastroenterologist has actually told me that I'm the only person she's ever met that this has happened to. So next is this, which is called Dufalac. This can be taken by babies and like pregnant women, so it's totally safe. It's basically sugar, very sweet and kind of sickly, but it works pretty well. You take, like you drink, it has a little cup in it and then it has here how much you can take a day. The thing with that one is that it's not, or both of those actually are not very predictable. So, well, none of them are predictable for me. Normally they're like, oh, you take this and in eight hours you go to the bathroom. And my body is like, <laughs> it'll be, sometimes it's like three hours. So sometimes I've taken it at night where they're like, take this before bed and then you will go to the bathroom in the morning. And I'll like wake up in the night sweating, needing to go to the bathroom. And other times I've taken it, I've woken up, I've gone about my day. And at like 3 p.m. my gut will be like, toilet now. So that's another option. Another one that I have seen even on Amazon is this one. It's called Fruits and Fibers. This is, it comes in two different kinds. So you get the ones that look like these cubes. This is basically like rhubarb, figs, plums, things like that that make you go. But in like a very purified, intense dosage basically. And you eat one before bedtime with a really big glass of water and then supposedly in eight hours your gut will be moving um for me it's not eight hours like maybe it's eight hours for you i don't know they also have this specific brand and like type in little pills so like capsules that you can take that are easily more easily taken apparently which is great however i do find that this can if i take it more than like three days or something like that, it'll depend. But sometimes um, it can go the other way and make me have diarrhea and then I have to scale back and like I find that um, the cubes are better even though they're like, they don't taste very good. It kind of tastes like an old lady basically, <laughs> what I imagine an old lady would taste like. But the thing is because they're cubes, you can cut them into like halves or quarters so you can manage it that way. So if you find that one is too much, but like a quarter is too little, you can kind of like play around with that, which I found really helpful. Whereas with the capsules, you can't do that. Like you have to take a whole capsule. So that's just something to keep in mind. And the last thing I have here is uh, Milk of Magnesia. It has been around for a really long time, like at least since World War II, probably longer. This can be used as a laxative, as an anti-acid. So it's actually really good for nausea as well. And that's why I was put on this. This was the first one I ever tried and it did help, but it eventually made me really nauseous to take this every day and I started like throwing up from taking this. So that is when my doctor was like, yeah, I've never heard of that. So that was weird, but normally it's really effective because it works as both a laxative and as an antioxidant. So it's really good for people with IBS because it helps control your nausea as well as helping you have more regular bowel movements. So definitely give this a try. It's also like very easy to get a hold of. Most of the time I tend to go between um, these two. They're the ones that kind of I found more helpful right now. We try very hard to use only things that are like more natural and more like over the counter supplement. Being on like drugs and medications, makes my gut work even less and whenever i start reducing something or we change it there's always an impact on my gut 
and I found that when I started reducing my, my current medication, it had a really good impact on my gut. I also drink lots of water, that also helps, and eat a lot of fruit. Some people say eat a lot of vegetables, um, like you're supposed to eat a lot of fibers, but I honestly have a really hard time digesting vegetables, most vegetables, most like legumes. Um, I can't have a lot of leafy greens. Most vegetables I just find hard to digest, so they actually make it harder for me to, they just make me sick and make me feel less well, so I try to avoid those and I eat a lot of fruit instead. But I don't think there is a specific diet that helps with IBS or fibro. I just find that um, you have to learn from your body. There's things that I can eat at times and I can't at other times. So it really is like a person to person basis. Um, these are just some things that I found helpful and that I have friends who have also found helpful. So that's everything that I have to talk about today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you liked talking about poop. If you did, please don't forget to leave it a like and a comment and consider subscribing to my channel if you have not done that already. I post new videos whenever I can. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Stay safe out there and I will see you in my next video.